The Murray River is Australia's longest river. It runs for 2,508 kilometres, dividing New South Wales and Victoria and enters the ocean in South Australia. Water quality of the Murray is deteriorating and the iconic river is experiencing the problem of increased turbidity. Turbidity is the murky, discoloured appearance of water which is caused by suspended particles such as soil and debris. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority states that turbidity becomes a problem when the fragments that cloud the water make it difficult for light to penetrate. Without light and oxygen, underwater vegetation won't grow, compromising the habitat and food source of native aquatic species. Many of these protected species rely on sight to feed, and the restrictive visibility and lack of suitable aquatic vegetation will make it difficult for these fish to survive. Turbidity can occur naturally by wind and water erosion, but the interference of mankind is also contributing to the problem. The Department of Primary Industries in New South Wales reported in 2014 that one of the major causes of turbidity in the Murray River is bank erosion caused by freshwater algal blooms. These blooms are caused by high levels of phosphorus and nitrogen. The nutrients enter the river as a byproduct of irrigation and water runoff from surrounding agricultural land. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has recorded 49,000 agricultural businesses in the Murray region in 2013, making it higher than any state or territory in the country. With such a high volume of farms using the river for irrigation, contaminated runoff is common. Whilst irrigation and algal blooms cause bank erosion, the turbid water is maintained by large numbers of the introduced pest carp. Introduced by man in the early 1900s, carp are known for their destructive feeding habits. They uproot vegetation, sucking and blowing what they don't want back into the water, disturbing sediment and soil. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority recognises this as a contributing factor to turbidity, as does the Department of Primary Industries, which confirms that this destructive feeding disturbs those nutrients that cause the algal blooms. The Murray River is an integral part of a sustainable future for the region. Over 50% of Australia's irrigated produce is watered by the Murray, as well as tourism bringing nearly 2.4 million domestic overnight visitors in 2014. The future of tourism is in jeopardy if the water quality continues to decline. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority predicts that tourism will potentially rival revenue from agricultural production, but only if the turbidity doesn't get worse. If it does, these regional communities will be seen as undesirable holiday locations. Turbidity management will take time, resources and commitment. By regulating irrigation techniques and imposing mandatory drip trickle systems, the heavy flow of water will be reduced, minimising contaminated runoff back into the river. In 2014, the Department of Agriculture has reported an increase in drip systems, but they're not yet enforced in the agricultural community. There are current investigations into the eradication of carp, and this will reduce the destruction of the underwater habitat and provide native species with a better rate of reproduction and survival. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority is currently funding an investigation by the CSIRO into daughterless technology. Daughterless technology is a process where the female carp are genetically modified to produce only male offspring. Unfortunately, typical control programs for carp don't work, as the scale of the species is too large. But by producing less female carp each generation, hopefully the species is eventually bred out. Now, daughterless technology is a long-term strategy, as the average lifespan of a carp is 30 years, so it will need to continue for generations to see results. For this, government funding and support must be secured for the plan to be implemented. The ecological communities of the Murray River will continue to be in danger if government and the local residents do not enforce or support these changes. If the agricultural and tourism industries don't take responsibility and work in conjunction with sustainable practices, the economic future of the region will also decline along with the quality of its water.